Hi, my beautiful people. Welcome to Don Sinclair Reggae Vibes. And today we're here in Jamaica and we're here with Caveman and he's the owner of Caveman International and Sound Recording Studio. Did I say it right? <laughs> How you doing, Caveman? Nice to meet Bless you. Up Bless up my yourself. boss, my general. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Uh, big up yourself, Unruly Cooley and Don Sinclair. Every time, Don Sinclair. Unruly Cooley. Everything nice. Nice. So, there are some little questions I want to ask. Just a few questions like, uh, what inspired you to start a sound and what year did you start? Right to the questions. Well, um, Caveman Sound System really started when my dad, back in the 70s, had a little party system. Okay. You know, but um, when 1980, me and my brother, that is Lion Man, we call him Ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take the sound system from our dad in 1980 you now and launched it professionally. Okay. When it was like he started it with what, one tuba. Okay, so he took it professionally. Mm, yeah, so, so we all right, revolutionized so it from nice, 1980. Nice, nice. You know? Right, right. And Still standing till today, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, where did the sound name came from? Well, it was like going to primary school as youths. You know, they said that we have some people played rough. Oh. So the nickname was Caveman. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, for that famous cartoon that used to come on television back right. then. <laughs> so you know, it was like from there, the sound system name emerged from that you know that part they calling us caveman yeah so you know we start building a sound now so you know we just automatically said this is caveman sound right and to the type of music you play it's a real rebel yeah type of sound, you know yeah the real reason for we stick to the uh, rasta cultural roots vibe is because at the foundation where we come from as youth Lee Kasperi mm -hmm. and my daddy mm -hmm. they are um, two first cousins Okay, nice. He's Kasperi, mom, and my father, mom, or sisters. Oh, right. So that whole musical yeah, that's where it vibration, comes in. reggae music, bloodline, that's where it yes. emerged from. Okay, yeah, right. So. And where is that sound came from? Where, where the sound came from? What well, area? We, well, we started it officially from this area that I'm in, oh, Rollington Town. Right. Yet, and then, then we moved to Nannyville. Mm -hmm. That's where the whole things start gathered now because that's where we start meeting young artists grooming them so okay we, so we, so we and like that's all you it's like k boat and okay. ninja kid and robert french okay then it ranks on holy right, right, but right. then tumpa lion nada ranks okay so that's why you decide to have a studio now yeah because all this studio really came about is by um me started doing the dub plates and cassette because for back then we used to go to arrows mm -hmm. and um, jammies tubbies mm -hmm. doing the dub plates live on plate but you know we're only human sometimes we have human error mm -hmm. you know you might get spit in your throat or something that <laughs> make you cough or something and right. that would spoil the dub plate so I started doing this thing from my home now, creating the music perfect on the cassette, mm -hmm. then carrying it to the studio to have it cut. Okay, very good. So, what has been your best dance and our sound clash to up to this day? Up to this day, if you can remember, Kevin. Okay, well, you know, we had so much good times in dances and parties that. Alright, the first sound clash I really went to was a place named Above Rocks. Oh. A song named Young Girl Promotion. <laughs> and, and that sound system, you have Tipa Lee and Rapper Robert, mm -hmm. and you know, other upcoming artists at the time. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had my crew with Charlie Ranks, Nada Ranks, Chicken mm -hmm. Hawk, you know, and I had a female clan at the time, female mm -hmm. artists and selectors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the males would, would remove one at a time and give the females a chance to take on the clash too. Right, right, So we right. create a different vibration back then in the dance. So you won't forget that. I can't forget that <laughs> Nice one, Mash nice one, nice one. promotion. <laughs> Alright now, there are three important things to, to be a good and a 
as especially for a startup soon. Can you tell me what are the three important things that really need to build a son and keep it up to this day? That's how you keep it up well, to this day. First and foremost, you got to know what a son system is. Right. Because a lot of people going out, you know, say they are son, but they don't really have a son. Mm -hmm. They only have a laptop mm -hmm. and some selections on the laptop and they right. call themselves son. Right. Son system, you have to have a sound itself with speakers and boxes and turntables or whatsoever it can be selectors and all of that. So to be a sound system you mm -hmm. first have to have a sound. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And you got to have good music because that is what attracts people to your sound. Exactly. Right, right. If you right. don't have good music you ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And your sound got to be um a force to be reckoned on you. Very competitive. Yeah, because a competitive world. world. Right. So, all right now, caveman. Very nice so far. So name your five dog plates that the five um dog plates that you played that is very special to you and how much did you pay for it in the those time? Well the five I think back hard special because dog plates. everything you really cut this bad, you know. And you can't remember how much you paid for one, even one um, back then. <laughs> well, um, the first first time going to like Tobby's mm -hmm. to cut dog, right. right? I paid, I think I like about eight hundred dollars. Wow, and that's a lot then. <laughs> yeah, man, that was big money back then, man. To really cut a dog for eight hundred dollars and four songs on that dog, and then now you 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 have to have the money for the art is different. Oh, right, right. Yes, because eight hundred dollars that would be just for getting the plate and the studio time to cut the dog. Right. But you'll have to have a separate money now mm -hmm. to pay the artist who is gonna sing on that dog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So right, if you have right. four different artists as gonna be on that dog plate, you have to have a money for each. So who is your most played artist when you are clashing and sound clash? And you know say you know say me use the artist here. Yeah. And me I gotta have the, the clash. Who? Who are you who is played? You know? Well, um, Sizzler Colony is one of my ES artists yes. from back then when me, yeah. you know, so anytime me play some Sizzler, I care where you draw. Yes. When me draw my Sizzler, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> artist of all time. Yeah, man. So you know, so you can't go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, man. So, um, name your, um, name your top three genre of music, you know. You have the reggae, what else you listen to, what you love, what you work with. And what vibes it give you? All right. The three of the genres. Reggae first and foremost because I'm a bloodline music. Right. But I also listen to some nice soul music too. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes listening to them soul music, they will recreate back some of them on reggae. Right. You know, and and those are the kind of music that really bring male and female crowds together. So I really love those music. Mm -hmm. And it reached to the soul, so yeah, you know, you know. I, yeah. I will listen a little um, jazz too. Um, I really like jazz. Yeah, man, I love. I that love kind. jazz because a lot of the soul music mm -hmm. coming from jazz. Right. You know? Yeah, but everything derives from reggae music, I think. <laughs> well, you see, we have we as a, as a nation of people, as black people, we have all different genres of music in and uh, from. From the one we call the, the, the Calypso, because when we go to Africa and see most of the countries I went to, mm -hmm. the background music they have, the indigenous music that they have, is have that Calypso background. Oh, yes. So, so that's why we here gravitate to it so much. Mm -hmm. The beat, the drumming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, nice. Okay, man. Mm -hmm. Um, last but not least, right? And so how we do. If you had your time again, is there anything you would change in this music business or anything you have done and you say you would have do it a different way? If you had the time again to do it over, would you change anything? No, well, you want, no. We never leave this. So it's not like a moment of having this time again. We never leave this thing. Okay. And right now, I'm on a very serious campaign. I need, I need the world to know, know right, right now that this music mm -hmm. is a music that I cherish and I love. Right. And a lot of these 
young and upcoming artists, mm -hmm. not bashing any of them, but they need to learn that this music was set on a certain standard. Right. And you have to study it and get back to that standard because the world out there know what the standard mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So don't be fooled around here and get a uh, kind of violent lyrics in this mm -hmm. music because right. it won't even do good for you who are doing it. Or for reggae music? Uh, for the music. Itself. Because I see where artists, their words, sentence them, make them their prison now. That's true. <laughs> so, thank so you. Have to overstand that it's very serious when you're dealing with this music. That's true, kid, man. So, yeah. man, a campaign to clean it up. Yes, man. Give thanks, give, man. Nice to have you, Unruly Cooley. Yeah. Reggae vibes. Give thanks. It was a privilege to inter interview Caveman here at his studio. It's a pleasure for this interview right? also. So you know? give thanks again. Yes. I'm out. Bless.